It's Monday, April 14th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. Preliminary results in the Afghan presidential election indicate a likely runoff between the two front runners, as no one candidate appears to have won more than 50% of the votes. Opposition candidate Abdullah Abdullah showed a slight lead over academic Ashraf Ghani, but not enough of a margin to win outright in the first round. The election of the successor to President Hamid Karzai will mark the country's first ever democratic transfer of power. The partial results are subject to change, however, as more reports of fraud have been registered throughout the country than in the last general elections in 2009. Opposing sides in the Syrian conflict are accusing each other of a chemical weapons attack that reportedly killed two people and injured over a hundred. Syrian state media blamed the al-Qaeda-linked al-Nusra front for the incident, which reportedly took place in Hama province on Friday, airing videos of what they claim to be the aftermath. Opposition activists, however, say that government forces are responsible. The Syrian government missed recent deadlines to hand over and destroy its chemical weapons stockpile and the chemical attack near the capital Damascus last August sparked an international outcry and threats of military action from the U.S. and Great Britain. Two policemen and two militants were killed in a gun battle in Kashmir after the militants sprayed the home of a pro-India politician with bullets. Yawar Masudi, whose home the militants targeted, is the youth leader of a political party that rules Kashmir on the state level. Officials say that the militants shot and killed the officers before snatching their weapons and fleeing into a nearby field. More police then pursued the militants, eventually shooting and killing them both. Separatist rebels have long targeted pro-India figures in the embattled, majority Muslim region that has been the focus of a border dispute with neighboring Pakistan for decades. The Kashmir Valley, where the attack took place, goes to the polls on April 24th to vote in India's general election. Thousands of gay rights activists marched through the streets of Lima to support a civil union law soon to be voted on in the National Congress. Congressmen spearheading the proposed legislation led chants and held signs calling for equal rights in the majority Catholic country. Uruguay became the first Latin American country to allow civil unions back in 2008. And since then, several other countries, including Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, and Ecuador, have taken similar measures. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. And I see the life being choked out of my son by three grown men who couldn't control themselves in what they call their attempt to restrain somebody. 